Hey guys, welcome to Cheeseways Gaming. Today we got Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. One of my favorite childhood games and I recently got it. Won it off eBay. So uh, I've been really wanting to play this and uh, I left off where I had it maybe five years ago when I had the game. So let's see where I'm at. Oh man, this is a fun game to play. My favorite Spyro game and uh, potentially my favorite PS1 game, period. Uh, yeah, just the movements are fluid. Um, all the levels are pretty great. Let's try, uh, what is this, Crystal Glacier? Don't remember this one. I, uh, I recently jumped back in and I wanted to play it when I got it. Like, right when I got the mail, I opened it up. I was like, <coughs> oh, I gotta play this. So I played, um, uh, the Harbor one. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, that was a good one. Oh, I remember this one. Those little, uh, those little, uh, what do you call them? Inuit, uh, Inuit cavemen, maybe? Yeah. Those guys are cool. All I have to do is just unmelt them. Spyro, the ice wizards have imprisoned our leader, Shaman Tuck. Can you help us rescue him? Shaman Tuck. Shaman Tuck. Okay. To Can you help us rescue him? It is urgent. He has our tickets to tonight's hockey game in Colossus Valley. <gasps> I know this one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that that that. Uh, ice hockey game is really freaking hard. Yeah, the heart's nice. I like the paintings on the side. All right, now I get to use the if cannon. You get on the catapult. We'll help you catapult. The chasm. All right. I am ready. Take me to Arida. All right. I like these little snow guys, they're so cute, but you have to melt them to bring health to sparks. Kinda sad, oh crap. I almost forgot about these little ice witches. Alright, gotta make sure they don't get frozen again. That sucks, when you, have, when you, uh, when you unfreeze a caveman, he's gotta do something, and uh, one of those ice witches uh, refreezes them. That just ticks me off. It's been probably like 12 years since I actually beat it. Maybe, yeah, maybe 12 years. I don't know how to go. 12 years? Yeah, sounds about right. Um, this game's a lot easier than I remember. <laughs> I mean, before I was dying all the time with those, uh, those eye switches. I don't know if I'm the only one, but when I, when I play these games like Spyro or Crash Bandicoot, I play to complete everything. Never used to when I was a kid, but now I do. So that means risking my life to... Explode, explode those bottles and yeah, one stupid little gem. All right. Fair enough. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, did I need to get anything else? I don't think so. Whew. It's almost therapeutic playing this game. My favorite level, if I had to be honest, was. Uh, between uh, probably the lava level. What is it called? It's called uh, uh, Scaleless Badlands. That might be my favorite level. Otherwise, um, let's see. otherwise. Uh, otherwise, Summer Forest, actually. Um, just the overall level with the portals in it. That one had some of the coolest music I've, I've heard in a video game. It's just really, really... Um, it's, it sounded like the environment. It didn't really sound like wind, but it had like the musical equivalent of what wind would sound like if it was music. Yeah. What's also cool is the drummer of the police did the soundtrack for this. That's pretty cool. Stuart Copeland. And, uh, I consider myself a huge... Oh, I a freaking droll rabbit. Asshole. Um, I consider myself a pretty big police fan. I got almost all their albums on record. But when I found out that Stuart Copeland made, you know, did the soundtrack for this, I was like, that's pretty awesome. Not only that, but, uh, the guy that did, uh, Spongebob, for, you know, well, actually still does Spongebob, uh, Tom Kenny. Does a voice of uh, Spyro. That's pretty freaking cool, if you ask me. 
I mean, Spongebob was like my whole entire childhood mixed in with this. It's just, I came to know this as an adult. It's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> just for worlds to collide. Especially a familiar world. You know. All right. Oh, money bags. Hello there, Spyro. I could arrange for you to cross this. If you ever want to see uh, the pinnacle of what an adult is like, or like what you what you see your parents like as a kid, money bags is the best. He is the best uh, image of what I would represent like adults to be. You know, as far as a kid. Hello there, Spyro. I could arrange for you to cross the bridge for ahem, a small fee, of course. 200 gems. Yeah, I got the gems. Thank Whatever. You, Thank you, Sparrow. Now I can buy that condo in Huracos that I've been so wanting for so long. Go ahead. Cross the bridge. <laughs> I mean, God. When you play Spyro for how many, you know, for however long, and you got to pay rent, essentially. You know, you've got to you gotta manage your gems correctly. Yeah, I remember first as a kid, I would just get enough gems just so I could pay him and cross the bridge. And then with me... I'm actually working hard trying to find all the little, all the gems here and there, and I'm doing well, but it just is crazy because I've, I've noticed so many things with this game, you know, since I've, you know, become an adult, <laughs> and uh, there's some deeper things there. You know, you're paying money for what I call rent, or whatever, and you're a uh, oh, dumb little guy. There's just uh, this there's so many funny things about this game. With you might be able Shaman to Tick didn't find Tuck, but I found Tick. Uh, okay. Do I didn't find 15? Okay, well then I guess I don't get to do that. How do I get back up? Okay, this. Okay. Yeah, I got this game and I got Crash Bandicoot 3 in the mail. I found Crash Bandicoot 1 in a garage sale. They wanted 20 bucks for that, can you believe that? Man. 20 bucks for that game, and other, other people were actually charging 28 for that game. I was able to talk it down to 12, being the master manipulator that I am. <laughs> Alright, so where am I supposed to go from here? Up to the little snake snack? Oh yeah, the bridge, do I? Then I'll kill enough enemies to go and do that thing the jig. Oh, I fell. Hate those little giant termites. I fell through the bridge I was connected to the ground. That sucks. For all the flaws of this game, I really I truly love this game. I don't know if it's because I'm biased, because I I played this game as a kid, or or what. But this will always be a gem to me. And it's not like a hidden gem to me because people love this game. I honestly think it's overrated. Or underrated, sorry. <laughs> I easily, easily think this is underrated. Uh, I'll watch uh, top 10 lists. That's what I do a lot. Is that a bunny? Screw you. Um, I'll watch top 10 lists in my spare time. And, and I'll look at you know top 10 PlayStation games of all time. It's criminal like they didn't include this. Like They'll include like at least one Crash Bandicoot game, great, that's good. But, to miss Spyro, it's, it's in such high demand for people to bring back these games, why couldn't it at least make, like, you know, top ten greatest games for the PlayStation list? I think it deserves it, honestly. I mean, each game got arguably better and better and better. So why, why couldn't they? You know? Don't know. Ah, uh, again, why would you put a horn on a rabbit? I don't understand. Whatever. <sighs> yeah, I think it's criminal though. People don't read this high enough. Thanks, Spyro. Just hold tight for a second and look out below. <laughs> I love low cutscenes. How can they jump that high? I don't know. With the, with the uh, first Spyro game. I remember playing that way, way, you know, like at least 20 years ago, uh, and uh, well, not quite 20. It's not quite 20 years ago. Well, I think. The first one might be 20, but anyway, maybe around like 2000, yeah, I, I played the original game. Crystal. I traded some hockey, and 
I fell in love with it. And the second game was even better. And I never really got to play the third one. And eventually, when uh, I borrowed it from a friend of mine, I was able to play the third one, and I didn't really care for it as much. They they had too much of a mind for open world, and I liked playing within the beaten path, however, feel like it wasn't quite the beaten path. You know, that's what a lot of these, you know, platforming PlayStation games did. They made you feel like it was open world, that you could explore, but they kept it contained enough to where you're not losing your way, or... You know, having it be so big that it's just, it's too much to really handle at once. And that's why I didn't really care for the third game. So as far as Spyro, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably always going to say that the second game is the crowning jewel of the series. But, uh, you never know. I, I would like to give the third game a chance in time. And hopefully maybe play it for you guys. So, there's always that. So I guess I already beat the level. Let's try another one, why not? Ah, uh, here we go, another cutscene. Wait, they keep the cutscenes in this game minimal. A lot, a lot, like, there's maybe th three, yeah, there's one at the beginning, one at the end, and uh, depending on what you do in the level, sometimes there's a couple here and there, but they always, they're always short enough to where you're not thinking, oh, how long is this going to last? But there's enough of them where you go, okay, each story's kind of got, or each level's got its own story, and just, it, it feels right. That's the balance that the games have always had. Oh, uh, what other levels do we have? Let's climb up this wall and find out. Actually, I need to get some sheep. <laughs> Alright, Sparks, eat it, buddy. Here we go. Now you get Alright. For the time when I first got this game, <laughs> I was thinking, "Holy crap!" You know what? The the graphics look so good on the PS1. Looking back at it, you can tell the uh, certain aspects of the building, like the ladder. It's not even it's not even protruding. Like it's not 3D. It's just a little a little uh, design on the side of the building. You can just so happen to climb. Uh, let's go to another figure of mine. Oh, I think it's this one. Fracture Hills. I don't know why I love it so much. Because it pisses me off, really. There's one there's one part of the of the level where you gotta guide this guy to safety. You no, know, yeah, you gotta guide this guy to safety and you have to hit every single uh giant stone guy on the way there. Yeah, those stone guys. You have to hit every stone guy on the way there. And in this one, you guys splat. And it's like two different sections, you have to beat it a couple times to actually beat it. But oh my gosh. And all you get is a stinking orb. But like this level, I think the reason why I like it is because it reminds me of, uh, well, hello there. it reminds me of uh, the first game. Where you're kind of stepping on the, the pedestal and the, the dragons would come out and just break through the shell. Yeah, they were, they were encased in the stone. I always like that. Now with this... Yeah, I don't know how Flame does that, but whatever. And God. so many good memories from this level. A lot of times when I chuck my controller, I think the, the two games that I played the most was was this game and Crash Bandicoot 3. I owned when I first bought a PlayStation in like 2002. And <laughs> I swear, with those two games, this level included, and then maybe the um, Arabian levels in uh, Crash 3. Made me chuck my controller again and again. Oh man. So I can remember. Okay, and these bushes. Holy freaking crap. If some of them come alive, some of them don't. You just, you just don't know. Dear God. <laughs> I lost a lot of lives from those dumb trees. What else is there? Oh my gosh, the pig's dancing. I've never noticed that. I've never noticed the pig dancing. 
That is cool. That is cool. Oh man. What else is there? If I had to choose another favorite level, what would that be? Let me see. I think my all-time favorite level in this game has got to be over in uh, uh, the summer area. Was it summer shoals or summer something or other? Let's see. Uh, tell you what, we're going this way. The coolest thing about this game, the coolest little secret that I found by accident um, <clears throat> was uh, actually take it back. I take it back. I found it on accident when I was trying to when I was trying to find out purpose. Um, so usually right here there's a little crack in the wall. It's the it's the only abnormality that you know that distinguishes it from it being any other wall. And you bam, you hit it, or you jump and hit it, then you're taking this little this little. Uh, Fairy gust wind or whatever. I I never knew this was here. Um, but when I had beaten the game up just about 100%, I was like, I've gotten every single thing in every single level looking down the book. How have I not? Oh, I'm missing what? Like one or two orbs in this, you know, in this level. So I found this and I went and glided all the way over that, that thing over there. And you can also run along the line of the, uh, of the walls of this level. That's freaking cool, though. It's just, uh, I miss how games used to have that. Used to have that secret little thing that you had to either look up or a friend would tell you, hey, you know, did you ever find that, that secret uh, way to access the top of the tower in the second world of Spyro 2? No. You have your friend come over and show you. I miss that. Man, that was bus talk. That was talk from when we'd be on the bus on the way to school or after school. Hey, remember, remember that part of Spyro? Oh, man, I love that part. Or I haven't even got there. Don't spoil too much. I, just, I miss that. And I die. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Let's see, what else? Let me see if I can just... Nope. I'll have to go up here again. This is one thing I could have done without. Was the steps. You had to jump and jump and jump and jump. And it got a little tiring. It could have just made it a little simpler, but whatever. I uh, probably missed it. Right here. Summer Forest. Oh man. Gosh. This one was awesome. I think just the music alone and the set of levels, if you were to add on top of that, some of the best levels in gaming, for at least for character platforming in my book, uh, goes to this, this game, this first world. The music, just beautiful. Um, the, the music's beautiful, the, the world's beautiful, it looks lush. Um, where is it? Ah, probably need to go, let's go this way. Yep, through here. The only thing that comes close to it, in my opinion, is probably the first Spyro game. It just, it, they just had great environments, great music, and it, it, I, was, I was hooked. And I, I got the second, I got the first and third Crash Bandicoot games, and I'm only at the second Spyro game. I'm looking to get the first Spyro and the third Spyro, and then the second Crash Bandicoot. But as always, money is, an, uh, is a factor. <laughs> but uh, maybe the, first, the best level, best first level in the game, might just be Glimmer. Like any time I come back to this game, you know, after after years of not playing it or a year or whatever, and I come back to it. I'm, I'm not just continuing where I left off. I'm starting the game over because the first level is so good. You, you get money bags in the first level. You've got a, a taste of what's to come in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in this level, in the first level. You can't go up the ladders yet, so there's there's a reason to come back to it. There's, oh, it's, just, it, it's one level and encapu encapsulates everything that's good about this game and saying there's much more to come. you got to explore more, and then you can come back. That's awesome. So I'll show you that real quick. Best first level I believe in gaming history. It's a lot better than Driver for PS1. Couldn't even get out of the garage. That was a Shlalam or Shlalam or whatever. And the little characters are cute too. You know, it's just adults can play it. 
I played it. My my best friend at the time, his father would play it. You know, this is an all around good game. That that's the uh, that's the stamp of a good game. And these guys are great. Holy crap! <laughs> oh man, those those little dinosaurs will run away. But my fa my favorite mission probably maybe would be this one. And again, you cannot you cannot do this right out of the gate. Uh, you have to climb all the way up that ladder. Head on up the ladder. The head up the ladder, and to kill at least ten enemies, and then you can use that that little portal thing to start hitting those gems up there, those gem lights. That is my favorite thing to do. It's a little challenging because you have a narrow uh, a narrow window to do it, but it's fun. And then right here, that opening up the bridge, you have to talk to money bags, but it's totally worth it. And the cool thing about this game is that one of the cool things is with the enemies. Some take a charge, others take the uh, take the fire. And uh, sometimes you don't know uh, just when uh, just what character would take what. Some big guys have a, like this weird weak spot, and you hit them, and they're like oh, and you're like ha ha, it's funny because they're so big. But other times uh, they're so big you don't see anything. You just hit them with fire, and they just burn up. It's great. And do I have enough people to get that yet? Probably not. So I'll have to probably bring up some more baddies and then come back and I'll show you that. Oh yes. Here we go. There's three right there. <laughs> I'm almost there. Alright. Let's see. There, dude. Bye bye. Okay, I'm gonna hit him. Let's go see how far along I am. Just to make good concepts in this game, I miss. I miss these games. And of course I can always go back and play them, but there's <clears throat> always a part of me that wants to have a new game like this. If they remastered it, it would only do it a little bit of justice. I wish that like like with, with Crash Bandicoot, like the uh, the Insane Trilogy, the new one for PS4, they added some stuff that was unreleased. And it was challenging, but it was enough fun to keep people playing because they never played it before or something new. And with if they ever do it with Spyro, they have the the uh, the remaster treatment. I really hope that they're able to uh, add like an extra game, you know, an unreleased game or unreleased levels or something, you know. It, just, it would it would be awesome. That'd be just enough for me. And seeing as though I haven't played a whole lot of the third game, that would be that'd be pretty awesome. But uh, at least I got the third game to play whenever I buy it. <laughs> I just got the money again. Got the money to buy it. I know, I know, I know. Rude, thanks. Okay, missed one. We gotta go back and do it all over again. It's not the hardest thing to do, but it is a little difficult, seeing as though you're coming into coming into the game. You know, we only got a certain amount of time to get all those, and I'm just about out of my time. No! Ah! Hey, and I missed all but one. Yep, and now they're all gonna show up again. I gotta hit him. You have to hit him all at one time. I can start hitting, I'll hit that one. Maybe I can hit it in time and they can all just shine. Nope, nope. Okay, well. That one's not shining. Oh, oh, and that last one. Can I get it? No! Ah! <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is this is my possibly my favorite uh, thing to do. To my favorite objective in this game is is this. Just I don't know. Because of all the color and the fact it's the first level and you get to come back to it and experience it twice at least. It, it's nice. It's nice. So much love put in each level, in each in each world. That's just cool. Thanks for helping me, like. I gotta play more PlayStation 1. <laughs> and the cool thing is, like, with, with, with this game is, um, especially with this one, I got the foil. Where am I? There we go. Foil. <laughs> it, it's, it's holographic, it's the booklet is, and it's in good condition. I got this for 10 bucks on eBay. Can you believe that? <laughs> Man. But, um, uh, 
But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Um, and uh, make sure you look at some of my other videos uh, if you like. I've got some on um, on Golden Knight. That was my last one. So if you like Golden Knight, like N64, please check that out. Uh, and as always, comment anything as long as it's family friendly and appropriate to some extent. Uh, I like, I like uh, talking to people and especially about each game. Uh, I know I had some people talk about my uh, Star Wars Battle for one. I love Star Wars. Love Star Wars. And so anytime I got someone that's commenting about you know, Star Wars or Spyro or any of these games that I love to play, then it's, it's really nice. I, I, I play my favorite games on here and it's always a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks guys and uh, spread the list.